Uh, hello, this is David Birch at Sarpath School of Navigation with a note on ocean currents, in particular how to view uh, vectorized ocean currents online and then how to uh, get them downloaded as a vector file and loaded well, once you have the vector file as a GRIB format, you can load it into any program, uh, any program that views GRIB files. But I'm, the example we'll use is OpenCPN. And so the background here and a place to get the link, this is at our home page. Well, it's not almost a home page. Starpath.com forward slash currents, forward slash currents. And if you forget that, you could look at the site map for starpath.com and then you could find it. But that would be the only place, starpath.com slash currents. And this is an article all about ocean currents, some nice videos up here. And then the discussion of the different models and different resources to look at and so on. But what I'm going to concentrate here on right now is what's called here, super neat presentation of global high com current forecasts. And that's one of the models. Uh, this is a commercial model that you have to buy the data. But I'm going to show that that's essentially the same. It's going to be very similar to the RTOFS, RTOFS model, which is available for free. So you go here, you click that link, and that's going to take you to a wonderful website at the University of Hawaii. And uh, that takes, it's got a lot going on, so it takes a while to load it. So that's at, that's at the University of Hawaii. And it uh, you can spend hours on this website, but we're going to just look at uh, a couple. We're just going to look at currents for now. They have all sorts of things here. Well, it's a little touchy here on the Zoom. You have to be careful about that. Okay, so we'll go over here to not observations, remote, forecast. So you click forecast. And you get down the forecast till you get to ocean forecast. And then you open that. And that's global. So you have global, Pacific, uh, various things. But we're going to choose global. And then you want to look at the velocity like that. And now the date, that is, um, I've already downloaded some gribs for 00, zero Zulu on the 15th. So we're going to compare to those. And we want the surface current. The date, we're going to want the 15th. And change the time to UTC. There you go, UTC. Now, oh, now we got to go back one. This is terrible. It's unforgivable. But, well, let's forgive them. Um, uh, zero... 12 a.m. on UTC, that would be 00, zero the first moment of the date of the 15th. So 12 a.m. is 00, zero Zulu. Uh, okay, so we got that. So now here's the data, and this is a HICOM model, and uh, showing the currents around Hawaii. And then we'll look here. I mean, it's actually global, global HICOM. And then later we'll go over and look at Gibraltar. Uh, as a second example. But let's just come in here and let's find Hawaii again. Again, the, the zoom, you have to be a little bit careful with your mouse or however you're doing this. Um, but so let's just show an example of this current. Let's see if this is any better. Plus, maybe a little bit better. And it's loading a tremendous amount of data. So every time you do something, don't be surprised that you have to wait a, a second. Okay, so let's just look at this. And when you, wow, okay, so I just brushed my mouse. So that's one thing to be careful about. Maybe it's my mouse. Yours might not be as bad. But um, so I, I'm left clicking and dragging. But if you just, if you wiggle that left click, you're going to change something. So here's the pattern right now off the, uh, ah, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so you see there's, Maybe I'm just even moving the mouse and it changes it. So it's just such a complex presentation that it's very sensitive. And that's too bad. Um, let, let, let's let that build and then we'll make the point here. Okay, so that's the current flow around there. Now, and I'm not going to talk about it here, but there are links in that current page. There are... Uh, 
uh, HF radar current measurements in this area. So you can actually go and test this forecast model in these areas with real measurements. But that's a different subject. Right now we're just going to be looking at this because you can get a global look at currents this way probably in about the nicest way online that I've seen. And it's a kind of secret. I don't, I've never seen this an, uh, announced before. But so when you're on here, see, here's the current. And this is what we want to see if this is true on, oh boy, terrible, on other models. So I'm right here. Let me just get a number here. So I'm going to click it. Now when you click any of these, it pops up uh, and tells you the current. So this current is 1.75, flowing pretty much north, uh, 325. And then the other thing you can see here is you could go a uh, text after today's date. Now this model is only about four days. I'm not three or three or four days maximum is the, is the length of the forecast. So it won't matter which of these you pick. But if I pick a week and say here, then at this particular point, oh, let's see, one, ah, it's only showing me two days for some reason. Um, uh, that's the 15th at zero, zero. So you see, here's then a forecast. You can get this in text or something, but it's showing you that at this particular place, the current's falling off. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean very much, that kind of data, because what could be happening is this stream, this kind of flow going up that direction. By the way, once we load this into something like OpenCPN, it'll be a lot more stable or some other program. And, but it could, yeah, I just don't know. It, you see, I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to talk. Oh, no, I have to touch it. So this, this stream, this meander of the current going up this way could just be sliding this way or that way where the actual strength stays at 1.6, 1.7 knots, but the whole band is moving this way or that way. So that's one area. And maybe... Uh, okay, and then before we leave here, so that's like 1.7 to the north. We have to remember that, and then we'll come back. Now I'm going to zoom in, and just to get another point for over there for our friends in Europe to look at, and I go to a particular place here uh, on purpose because in this area right outside of Gibraltar, this area here is really famous for having sometimes one big mesoscale eddy going around like this with real strong currents. But this area has a lot of eddies in it. So if you're sailing out of here going this way, knowing about these eddies, these uh, mesoscale eddies is a big... Uh, is a big factor for your navigation. So when we zoom in here, you see here's one going around like this. Now let's see if I dare zoom in a little further. Um, and then we'll look at this on a more stable platform later. But you see here's an eddy of current. And uh, this speed right here, for example, what is it? 1.5 knots. And here just on this other side, not far away, is 1.6 knots going the other way. So there's two regions, well, you can look at a lot of places in the world, but you'll usually find eddies in this, in this part of the world. Sometimes one big one. And uh, so those are the two, that's to show, that's, so, so that's step one, how you use this site from SOWEST in Hawaii to look at these currents online, and hopefully you have better luck with your mouse or your interaction with this complex web page. And there, are, like I mentioned, there are tons of things to play with over here. A lot of them are restricted to Hawaii, but there are some global data, like this wonderful presentation of the HICOM model. All right, now let's go look at some GRIB files. Now, um, we can get these GRIB files. Let me just show that first. This is the blog. Okay, I'm going to have to back up and go to starpath.com. Starpath.com. That's our home page. And then you see here, this is our blog. And that's our home page. And this is, a, no, that's not our blog. This is our home page, which has this little portal into our blog. This is a navigation blog down here. These are the latest articles. There's hundreds of articles in there. These are just the last few. And if you go to this one, the Astoria, because I just know that we put this up here in this. So this is the, uh, we put this list here in the talk. So this is about a coastal, doing some navigation and weather planning for a coastal route along the west coast of the U.S. But if you go down that list, 
then you'll see the really let me just see if that's where that is I had it set up wait a minute maybe I yeah if you scroll down that page you'll come to this section here and this is how you get weather weather grip files from sale docs you just send them an email um, you send the email this is just their name query at saledocs.com and now you would normally not ask for all of this, but I've asked for all these grib files at once because of the presentation, the talk that was going on before. But it just shows you the format. And here's the one for the waves. And, and so you just send this email in about a minute, you'll get back in your email the files we're going to look at in a minute. So you, uh, RTOFS dash global. And then a colon and a lat the top latitude, the bottom, you know, the northernmost, the two latitudes, two longitudes. This is the resolution of the data. Just copy this. Now this this format here, zero comma three, comma 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 forty eight. Now the RTOFS I think actually goes out another day, so you could probably put ninety six in there, or. Um, 72 or 90, probably put 96, and then slash current. But this means give me, give me, give us back the data every three hours all the way up to 48 hours. That's what that means. And then if you go to this link in the paper, it'll tell you all about it. So that's how you get these files mailed back to you. And then let me see. Um, I've got some of those loaded. Now I'm on a Mac and you can you can view those files. I'm going to go into OpenCPN in a minute, but I just want to view these. There's a HiCom uh, Art Hawaii ICOM Art HiCom. So this one I've loaded now. Okay, so I'm looking here at a HiCom model, which is exactly the same as we we're looking at in Hawaii. Um, but this this HICOM data is a commercial product, and this one I downloaded from the company called Oceans. There's other commercial sources of it. But then, um, let me just look up here. So this is the time, and I'm looking, I'm actually viewing this in a program called Luck Grib. It's a Macintosh product that uh, is a pretty remarkable viewer of Grib files. Now, it doesn't do weather routing and navigation like you'll do in OpenCPN but it does the uh, very uh, top-of-the-line job on presenting the grip files. So here is this current now in the HICOM model. And you see here, now that's 1.2, 1. 1. see just north of the island. Now it's, it's interesting, it's a little bit, I have to go back and check the angles. But anyway, here's that, here's that band of current that we were seeing right there. And then, and then you can look as as time goes by how this is how this is changing with time. That's the end of the data. So that's that's that. Now let's go. Let's see. I've got HiCom. Now now just for completeness, let's go to Gibraltar. Uh, Gibraltar Artofs. Um, Well, I don't see it. Gibraltar uh, HiCom here. Okay. Okay. So now this is viewing that same area. Remember perspective where that was. That was down. This is the eddy we were looking at uh, of the, from this area here. And you see the, and the time's right and so forth. So that's that's that. That's the high comp. So that's so. This is just comparing what you would see if you could get a grib file of that thing you're looking at, the 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 high comp model from Hawaii. This is what it looks like. But now the point at hand. Let's see how that compares. Now that's Gibraltar, Hawaii high comp. Now we go back to Hawaii, and you see here is now the high comp model for Hawaii. No. Yeah, this is HICOM. That's HICOM. We looked at that. But now, let's go to what you can actually get by sending an email. You would get the Hawaii RTOF. So we have to look at this picture here. Now look at the RTOFs here. And that is here. So you see, you still get this. A total, it's a different model. I, I, don't, I don't think I dare say totally different because one of those is based on the other. 
uh, and that's discussed in that article. But you see here now is this current band, and again, you see you're getting it from the RTOFs, uh, you're getting it from the RTOFs model. Uh, just fine. Even though you don't have the HICOM, you get, uh, you get it from the RTOFs, which is free. And global. Global RTOFs. Now, uh, now uh, let's just go Gibraltar RTOFs. And again, this is the RTOFs uh, from Gibraltar, and we're comparing it to the HICOM, and you see it right here. Um, let me... Uh, I have some other data here from some other models, but we'll let that go for now. But this is uh, your workhorse. When you're doing weather routing in the, um, in the open CPN, chances are your workhorse current source will be RTOFs. Okay, so let's go back now then. That's that. So that shows that the, these two models are the same. One could be argued as better than the other, but the one you're going to get is, uh, is going to be uh, perfectly adequate and hard to argue. Not as good. So now we go to the OpenCPN here. And uh, let's see. OpenCPN, there's Hawaii. Oh, now what currents do I have loaded here? Let me go back and show. Okay, so here's the, gri here's the Grib uh, importer plugin. And uh, so I don't know which ones I've got in here, but let me hit. So you would go to here, open a file. So you obviously need to load and install that plugin. Then you go here, and I'm going to do Hawaii, uh, Hawaii RTOFs, Hawaii RTOFs thing, and then load it. Okay, so that's loaded here. And so here's what it looks. Now I have to show a little bit. So this is what it looks like in the Open CPN. Um, and there's two things going on in this display. And you see that. Let's see. Where is that picture? Maybe I can. Well, okay. I want to. Uh, it, it covers and uncovers. So I'm going to hit this and hit it twice. And it comes up on top and stays on top. So now we got Friday the 14th at zero. I think we have to go to the 15th. Yeah, 15th, zero, zero. Now we're in business. So this is now loaded into here. And if you're doing weather routing, you, would, you could use those currents. But keep in mind, they're only going to go out. Like I loaded that uh, RTOF. Let's see how many days we get. We got the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 18th. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Five days. Okay, and here's what we're comparing to. So here is this current here. And with this display, a nice, a nice vector display here, you've got to read the current and direction down here. And there you see it, 1.5, 1.6. So that's uh, importing very nicely there. Now, just to look a little bit at the display, um, there's different options to doing this. This, this pattern here of like uh, moving streamlines, I think is here called particle map. So apply. So that's called particle map. And that and I have to better read the instructions, but this is a uh, is like moving streamlines. So if you turn that on, you get this enhancement of the picture. It looks like that, or and then the rest of it, I have just turned on an overlay of the map, and I just look at you can look at these settings. There may be a better way to display it. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, this this does show the data. And uh, OK. And this changes the density. This number here, this is a particle map, the streamline density. And if you change this to 10, then there's just a whole lot more of these lines going across there. And if you bring it down here, you barely see it. So no, I mean, 10, there's a whole lot of these lines. And one, there's not very many. So that's OK. So that is, uh, that's that model of the, um, and that's good for about four days. And uh, you can use that. You could use that in the weather routing uh, in the weather routing program. And I'll stop there. Sounds like it's a good time to stop.